Hi everybody, it's Robin from Talks from the Heart. Well, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use um, and then I'm going to um, do a voiceover for the rest of it just so that I can keep my thoughts straight and uh, just kind of get the information out to you and get you caught up on my health journey with type two diabetes. So I pulled two Tombos. Um, the first one, let me show you actually the sticker kits. I pulled out two. I'm going to do two weeks because I was going through my stickers and getting them organized for another video I'm going to film this afternoon. And I just thought, you know what? I want to use this. I want to use both of them. So the first one is from Krell's Creations. And as usual, I have codes below for Krell's Creations and also Southern Bell Plants. So this is from Krell's Creations. This is actually a monthly kit, I believe and you can buy her stuff a la carte. At first, when you're on her website, it gets a little confusing, but she has everything super, super labeled, um, and so you can just choose the sheet you want, which I always appreciate because, like, in um, vertical kits, I don't use the checklist sheet, and so it's nice when I don't ha I'm not forced to buy it. And then, um, so this is Hello Town, and this is also Hello Town Sheet C. And then I have some numbers on transparent mat and some days of the week from Pookie Bear Cuties. I constantly use these and constantly keep them in stock. I love them. Southern Belle Plans. This is Doodle 47. It's her little character on a scale. She sent that to me thinking I would use it and I am going to start using it. And then this is um, one of her sheets number 247. Again, she's got... A all three of these shops have huge websites with lots to look at. So just have fun, you guys. Just have fun. So just remember the code because you don't want to pay full price if you don't have to, you guys. All right. So I'm going to do two weeks in my health journal and I'm going to start the voiceover now. Okay, first of all, this weekend, I am babysitting my grandson, Coda. He's a big silver lab, and it's like having a small mini horse in the house. And I'm going to put a little video up here where I, this is what he does. He lays on my couch, which I'm not completely thrilled about because he sheds more than Cooper, who's basically a non-shedding dog, and he stares at me. <laughs> okay, he does make me laugh, and he is crazy sweet, you guys, crazy sweet. Okay. So as per the title, I'm getting over this. I'm so sick of this type 2 diabetes crap. I'm tired of this journal. I'm catching myself falling off the wagon with uh, journaling about it, logging my food. Um, I'm not like, I'm going to say I'm 40% being bad with my eating, but that's just because like, for instance, you'll see on the notes pages on Monday, I had pancakes. I just couldn't take it anymore. I snapped. I needed some kind of smack roll of something that was bready. And um, I just could not eat any more meat and cheese and vegetables. I couldn't do it. And so, um, all right. So backing up, when I got diagnosed with this in January 2nd, I I traditionally have only seen my OBGYN my entire adult life since I was 28 when I moved from Minnesota to Iowa. And my OBGYN, he, first of all, wouldn't have treated me for this, but he suddenly passed away last spring, spring of 2023. And so um, <clears throat> I really didn't have a choice. I had to go see an internal med doctor, and I found this physician who I just adored. He was so compassionate. He listened. He knew what he was doing. And I loved him. And this clinic that is in my town that has a couple of locations just recently, a couple of weeks ago, laid off a bunch of people. Now, I didn't know as a physician, you could get laid off. I mean, call, I guess call me ignorant. And then there's a no complete com Ugh. no compete clause 35 mile radius I found out because I started looking for them and so they paired me with another physician and my numbness and pain in my feet had gotten so bad I couldn't sleep and I didn't understand why because I was staying within my carb level and my glucose numbers are going down and have been going down so I made an appointment with this new doctor and that they paired me with. And I, oh my gosh, Coda's staring at me again. Um, <laughs> I did not like her. You guys, she put words in my mouth. She talked over me. She was really single-minded. And I get that the healthcare profession is changing, but geez Louise, you know, calm the blank down and listen to what I'm saying. And so at one point, 
I just said, you're not listening to me and you're putting words in my mouth. And that's when she realized she had really pissed me off and that she needed to like just stop for a moment. And she was just, I'm, I might use some inappropriate words, but she was just hell bent on only talking about my feet when I also feel like, you know, I'm not just only about my feet. And, um, you know, I don't know. I left really upset and called a friend and just went, ah, that did not go very well. I was, I was hot. I was really mad and frustrated because I really adored my doctor. And uh, so what I decided to do was calm down and realize that some people have off days. And on March, I don't know, the last Monday of March, I have an appointment with her, which is the get to know you appointment. <sighs> Big eye roll, you guys. Because that's all she kept saying was, well, we'll talk about this on the, tw I think it's the 28th. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. When, when we do the get to know you appointment, I'm like, oh, for Pete's sakes, you know, it's like, I mean, she couldn't get in and out of that room fast enough. And I don't know. And then I had a, another friend who said, oh, who is your doctor? And I said the name. She goes, oh, yeah, I saw her once. I didn't like her. And I went, oh, great. So she did refill my subscription, my prescription. Um for 90 days. And I thought, well, I'm going to honor that with going back and giving her another chance and seeing if, if it's a complete train wreck, like I felt that was, I'm going to, um, I'm going to look for another doctor. And if it's not, I'm, you know, I'm going to keep an open heart and I keep an open mind and give her another chance. Cause like I said, she's a person too. And maybe she was having an off day. Also, maybe they put restrictions on them. I know I've heard of that. We're in and out in 10 minutes because their appointments are stacked. And then I do know physicians have to, cause my, my husband was a PhD and I mean, beyond teaching and research, he also had to read all the journals to keep up on things. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's a very difficult profession nowadays when it's all about the money, big pharma and all this stuff. You know, I don't want to get political, but, you know, so that's the first thing that happened. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So um, I'm really sick of logging everything and journal everything. I'm sick of meat and cheese. I just want to feel normal again. And by normal, like part of society. And I know this is a half pity party, half, um, you know, what was me? And then also, um, just kind of just getting used to a new norm and I'm right in the middle of it, you know, and I started out really, you know, hard and fast on it and I took it super serious and I still am taking it very serious, but oh, you guys, it's, it's weighing on me to the point where I get to the evenings and I get really just down and not I'm gonna say not depressed but just like feeling really like ugh, I'm over it and in the past when I would get down like that I would eat my feelings which is how I ended up being 305 pounds so I'm not eating my feelings which is a good sign and I'm not um, going to sugar or food to like you know I don't know if placate's the right word, but to make me feel better, I'm not. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it, it's an adjustment period, and I think I'm in the mad phase. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think I'm smack dab in the middle of the mad phase because I seriously, on Monday, when I had those pancakes, I was like, I just don't even care. I don't even care if this makes my feet hurt. I don't care. I don't care. And oh my goodness, you guys, I mean, it, it, I get it. It's like a drug. You know, that first bite of pancake, I was all like, oh, I think I probably moaned out loud. I was all over it. Like, oh, you know, big sigh of relief. And, um... I'm good. I'm going to get to the other part here in a minute. So that also correlates with this. So, well, actually, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to just get into the story where I was at the grocery store yesterday. Well, actually this, I think it'll be organized. I was at the grocery store and I find that exhausting too, because I sometimes forget to read labels where like vitamin water zero, there's only the blueberry pomegranate one that has zero carbs. And I bought six 
no, four six packs of it because it was on sale. And if it's something I know I'm, I enjoy and I'm allowed to eat, I stock up on it if it's on sale. And I did not read all of the six packs and I got two of the ones that had sugar and I was just big eye roll, like so frustrated. And, you know, my son took it, but, you know, I don't want to start, you know, giving him stuff that might give him type two diabetes, you know? So I was just, you know, I don't know. I just find the grocery store exhausting. And you know, the funny thing is, it's like my brain is like all over the place with this stuff. I can walk past the cookie aisle now and I can totally like, I'm good. I don't want it. Um, but like on Thursdays and Fridays, when I go into the office, it's like I get my donut and I'm like, I have to have it. I can't explain it. I don't, don't try to analyze it for now. It just is what it is. And I found a low carb cereal that was only four grams. It was plant based and I, it was $9 a box, you guys. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this would be, you know, with almond milk, which has one gram of carb. And I also want to remind you, I don't count net carbs. I count just the full carbs. And that's what my dietitian told me to do. So I'm doing what I'm being told to do. And I, I was so excited. And then I thought, well, $9 a box. Oh, for Pete's sakes. I mean, do I have to donate an organ too? I mean, I was just like, wow. And, you know, I realized that I'm just feeding me. And so, you know, if it if it's something that'll work and give me success with my health, I will pay it. But it also, is it necessary? So I roamed the store, finishing my list. And then I finally called my mom. And I was like, mom, you got to talk me off the ledge. I'm about to buy a $9 box of cereal. And she's like, well, does it have this in it? Does it have that in it? And I said, I don't know. I forgot to read the label. So while she was on the phone, I walked over and we read the label together. Or I read it and it had sucralose in it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, no way. I'm like, nope that's done. So it was like, that wasn't even an option. And, um, so I said, well, I better let you go now. Now my my mom watches my videos and mom, I'm going to tell you now, I get it. You were watching out for me. I understand. So I'm just saying this as part of the story of how I will eventually become successful. But I said, I have to go because I need to finish this store because I have to go to another store and buy my bagels. And she said, bagels? <laughs> well, she didn't yell at me. She said, bagels? Why are you eating a bagel? I go, listen, it's a gluten-free bagel. It's Udi's whole wheat bagel. It has 38 grams. I have one every morning during the week. Actually, I, I only have it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when I work from home. And I said, it is what it is. And she was like, well, you know, and she gave me a little bit of a lecture. But I want to say, it's okay coming from somebody that actually lives what they preach. And my mom lives what she preaches. But I just, and I wasn't offended because it's, you know, she's tr- she's trying to help me. But, you know, I thought to myself later in the day, I thought, you know, it right now, that's about the only bread I have. Where in the past, I would start my day with donuts, pastries, or bread and toast with butter and jam and all the stuff, right? And now I'm down to bread Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, basically like, you know, once a day or maybe twice a day. I don't have two bagels, but maybe I'll have like my keto bread um, in the evening or something. So just I'm making progress, but I'm not fully there yet. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say is I'm really in the middle of it all. And I'm starting to get pissed off. And I guess... I guess I just want to encourage anybody who's doing their best and making small, consistent steps to just keep going because you guys, I want to quit so bad. I'm hanging off the back of the wagon, you guys. (laughs) I'm hanging off the back of the wagon and my feet are, and I'm on my belly. Imagine this. I'm on my belly gripping with my fingers the tailgate of the truck or the wagon, and my feet, my toes are dragging, my little sneakers are dragging in the dirt, (laughs) and I'm about to let go, but I refuse, I refuse, because I know what the alternative would be, and honestly, if you think of that analogy, I would die, 
And that's how I view it. So I just want to encourage you that if you're going through a similar transition, a similar change where your life depends on it, or just the pure, your pure sanity depends on it. Because I was having, you know, before this diagnosis and all the changes, I was having insane pain in my whole body, basically. It was nerve pain, numbness, uh, like nails were being shot through my feet. And I was just, I wasn't even fully conscious. I, w- I, I was just hanging on for dear life, you know, just surviving. So if you're doing what, if you're in the middle of what I'm in the middle of, even if it's not exactly the same, but you're doing your best and you're making changes and you're trying super hard to stay consistent with them, just keep going. Don't let your fingers let go of that tailgate. Don't do it. (laughs) Keep going. (laughs) I'm just laughing because really, you guys, I mean, there's some days where I'm like, that's it. I'm going to Taco Bell. (laughs) You know, it's over. And while I'm there, I'm getting a Mountain Dew and a shake and an icy and all the things, you know. But honestly, I mean, my heart is in a place where I want to make these changes permanent, where that thought doesn't even come to my mind anymore. You know, it just isn't even a part of me. So thank you, mom, for loving me. But I'm going to have my bagel until I choose not to have it anymore because it's sometimes that's what I grip to and it's all I've got. So, okay. So what else did I write down? So let's talk about my office days. We had talked about this in the past. I have to get up because Coda's asking to go out. So we had talked about this in the past. The office days are where I totally, I totally just fail. I mean, I fail all day until I get home and I have my proper groceries in the house. And I do allow myself a Wendy's burger. And I was eating the meal. And the things that I changed were this. I did find, and I filmed a little bit of the packaging. I did find some, for me, acceptable. And let me say this. For me, I'm willing to spend my carbs in this way. I found some really good organic dark chocolate treats and for some reason they fill me up way more than regular candy and I'm willing to spend my carbs in that way. They're a little expensive but you know the other thing is they're not my trigger food so I have a jar with like two of each of these candies that I'm showing here on the split screen and they just sit in the kitchen and I'm I'm okay with it. And if I've got a hankering for something, usually it's in the evening after dinner, I'll have one. And it's like, I can't figure it out. But if I had Reese's peanut butter cups in the house, I would binge eat those till they were all gone. Absolutely. So I've replaced the candy with bringing a dark chocolate peanut butter cup. So that is progress because I was eating king size Reese's peanut butter cups, which have four cups in them, which was about, don't quote me, like 64 grams of carbs. And these have like six, five, and four. And I eat one. So that is absolute progress. The other thing that I decided to do was chop up too many cucumbers because they're crunchy and I love them. And I order the burger. Um, and I I know, don't get mad, but I ordered the burger and a Diet Coke and, um, I'm trying to wean myself off that Diet Coke with the, the burger and, um, it, it'll happen, but I used to drink Diet Coke at home every day. So again, that's progress, but I swapped out, I don't order the fries anymore and I, um, bring mini cucumbers and I eat that with my burger. So you guys, that's super good progress. So I'm, trading the food for something else that I enjoy and bringing it with me to work. I'm hoping eventually my goal is to get where I don't, I don't stop at the convenience store. I don't go to Wendy's, you know, but I don't know, you know, um, for me, the burger is acceptable and, um, I know the bun has a lot of carbs, but I'm okay with that for right now. So, When I'm at home, I do great. I do absolutely fine. Uh, The office days are super hard for me. 
I'm like a chain snacker when I'm there. I, I, I don't, I can't figure it out. And when I'm at home, I completely fast till like, you know, 1030 in the morning and I'm good to go. I have no issues. So I have no clue um, why I'm like that. And uh, eventually I'll figure it out. But yeah, the after I filmed the last health journal update where I shared about how I was just completely like off the rails when I would when it go into the office and I told you all that I ate, I started sitting down, I sat down and I had a conversation with myself and I was like, okay, what can we trade? What can we trade? It's like a toddler, you know, when you take a toy away or something they're not supposed to have, give them something else. Well, that's kind of what, I, that's kind of the progress. So the other thing is, because I, I was buying the um, popcorn from the convenience store and now I bring my organic um, popcorn. It's like 16 carbs for three cups and I'm good with that. I put it in a little baggie and I enjoy that. So, you know, it's it's working. I'm looking at my behaviors and asking myself, how can I fix them? Um, again, not ready, to, not ready to give up my bagels. <laughs> I know my mom, she's thinking, whatever. <laughs> my mom is super, super smart. And I was thinking about how I depend on her because she's such a good book learner. And anybody who's not a book learner, you need to have a couple or yeah, if you're not somebody who learns really well with books, you need to have a couple of friends that are good studiers and good researchers, because then you can just, you know, ask them questions and they do, they do the work for you. Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, because I have like, I have numerous friends that are super good book learners. And I'm like, Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> I probably should edit that out, but I won't I'll leave it in because anybody who's not a book learner totally understands what I'm talking about. So all right, so the um, the uh, candy options that I found in our health market section of the grocery store is really working for me. And um, also, uh, dark chocolate dipped in peanut butter. Uh, Sarah Martinez tells me that's some of her favorite go-to treats. So that's another idea. I also don't, I don't know, dark chocolate. I love it in these peanut butter cups and stuff, but I haven't really found one that I feel like has low enough carbs that I'm willing to... Um, you know, trade. But I will tell you that these servings also, I wanted to remember to tell you that these servings are not small. You know how they're like, you can have six of them for only five carbs, but you know, you, you need a magnifying glass to see the six pieces. <laughs> and you're like, okay, no, come on, give me a, give me a, a man size bite, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I need to get back on track. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, when I met with the doctor, she wanted to like, change my meds and stuff. And I said, No, no, I'm good with everything that's going on. We upped, we upped the um, metformin. And she did say that I was doing really well with my numbers based on the fact that I was only on 500 milligrams of it uh, twice a day. So I was I was happy about that. And then the other thing that I've really had to overcome is not comparing my story with somebody else who has type 2 diabetes because I have um, I have a friend and it, it, this friend is local and got diagnosed and uh, talked to them and it was like, I go, well, how are your numbers? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I go, aren't you supposed to test that every day? And they're like, well, you know, and I just went, okay, I have to like... I, I can't, you know, because I thought, don't do this, Robin. Don't come, don't compare yourself to somebody else. Their journey is different than yours. And take, you know, so I guess what I'm trying to um, tell you guys is take what I share as my journey. But if you can glean anything from it or glean, glean, glean anything from it. I think that's the right word. Um, great. That is the purpose of me sharing, you know, so I think that's it. That's it. So these are the two spreads. This is where I make my notes, bit win or fail. Um, and then here are the two pages where I do the stats. 
I'm kind of um, weaning myself off of keeping track of like my sleep hours and stuff. I'm over it, you guys. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't need to do that. So, okay, thanks everybody. All right, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and always enjoy today, you guys. All right, thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you.